I'm Luke with Auto Darts. Today we are gonna check out the SR200 from Orange Armory. I finally got my hands on a working one. Let's get going. Back in the middle of March, I pre-ordered this blaster from Orange Armory called the SR200. Uh, this blaster is a pump action, spring-powered, talon-fed blaster, and it is exclusively for short darts. Uh, the fact that it was exclusively for short darts and its unique styling are what really attracted this to me. Nope, probably attracted me to the blaster, let's say that. However, when the first blaster did show up at the warehouse, my very first prime broke the blaster in half, revealing some very poor layer heights inside and just very poor print quality overall. Uh, I did speak with the company and it sounds like Orange Modworks had issues with uh, both their filament supplier and with the people that were actually printing and assembling these. One of the reasons that you shouldn't outsource your production. I'm saying that from experience. Uh, every time, with limited exception, I've tried to outsource something as far as printing on demand, it is just really not a great idea. So this first blaster was essentially unusable. Now I'm starting this review out talking about the sort of issues here with the original one because this took a long time to get fixed and I have to say that I'm pretty disappointed with that and it is definitely factored into my review. Ordered the blaster in the middle of March, I believe March 19th. Uh, about six or seven weeks later, I got this one that broke. You will notice that we are in October. At the very end of September, I finally got the replacement. So let's think May, June, July, August, September, October. Five months to reprint and ship a blaster. Now, I don't know how many of these they sold and how many are out in the wild or how many they had to replace, but to me, that just seems I have no other term but for it but unacceptable. Uh, it is really, really incredibly disappointing uh, to, to back a project and to pay for a blaster and then to wait that long and then to get something that, uh, you know, broke af after six weeks of waiting and then to wait another five months to get the actual replacement. Unfortunately, during all that time, they were pretty radio silent about actually giving updates. And it wasn't until I actually reached out again and asked and asked multiple people that I knew had contact with Orange Armory that we got a response. Ultimately, I just wanna put that all out there because it does taint the review for me considerably. If this had showed up in the beginning, I think the review would be more positive, but my experience at this point with the company is pretty is pretty poor. And I, I hate to see this because I wanted them to win. I wanted to see another third party company really making cool stuff. They came out with a Cybertech line of blasters, which was going to be injection molded, uh, solenoid powered blasters. And uh, those never got made. They had to give refunds across the board. I never got mine. And uh, this is kind of another, in my opinion, failing as far as customer service and expectations and delivery schedules. Without talking too much more on the delays, we're gonna just go ahead and review this as if we just received it now. It is worth noting that this is not sponsored in any way and I did pay full price for this. It was $150 plus shipping, so I think it ended up being about $166. Right off the bat, it's a pump action Springer and the first thing you're gonna notice when you pick up this blaster is that it is incredibly comfortable. This is one of the best 3D printed grips, if not the best 3D printed grip on a Springer that I think I have ever felt. It is very, very comfortable for my hands and I think it would be comfortable for a lot of hands. Uh, we've got a very cool stylized design, feels very, um, you know, space blaster like, almost like a railgun or something cool, and this sort of uh, industrial looking uh, rods up front. These rods go all the way from the front to the back, that's how the assembly works. One really nice touch that definitely feels more premium is this metal trigger. This is uncoated, uh, it looks like galvanized. I believe it's galvanized steel, um, so it shouldn't rust, but it's not like stainless or it hasn't been anodized or anything like that. That can add quite a bit to cost, but I think it's some nice style points and it feels pretty comfortable. It's uh, a little bit of a sharp edge there, but considering it's metal, it's pretty cool. Uh, we did notice that when I first got the blaster, 
but after the first couple magazines through it, the trigger pull was insanely hard. It seems to be loosening up, loosening up over time. I'm not sure what's going on with the catch system there, but it still feels a little heavy. The trigger pull is heavier than other blasters I've got, and uh, it leaves a little bit to be desired uh, as far as the physical weight of the trigger. Down below, we have a pretty standard mag release, which is nice and crisp, and it works with Talon magazines and of course our Tachi mags. It's worth noting that the tolerances are such that the Tachi won't airdrop, but personally, I always grab them anyway. I, I don't know who throws mags or pitches mags onto concrete that are made of plastic. Uh, does anybody actually do that? Put that in the comments if you do, if you like doing the, you know, no. Uh, no one does that. Uh, it's also worth noting that you couldn't really do that with this blaster anyway, because you can't really reach that mag release very well without with your, with your middle finger. So I could definitely see the same style extensions that we put on the Mark III and for the Nexus uh, could be retrofitted for this blaster as well to make it a little more comfortable if you wanted to have your middle finger remove the mag. But you can get pretty used to grabbing just fine. One more note on ergonomics is this front grip. While the grip itself is very, is very comfortable and it didn't break like this one, at least not so far, uh, it is unfortunately a little sharp on these edges here and it tends to bite in the back of my hand here. I'm starting to think that I just have mutant hands or something. So I'd love to hear from anybody else that's actually touched this blaster. But um, when priming this, the webbing on my, between my thumb and my uh, pointer finger are, are cut in here. So I would have liked to have seen that either filled or designed a little differently so that there's a little more space, but that's ultimately just me. The grip itself is non-permanent. Underneath is actually a Picatinny rail, so you could actually put any grip or foregrip or pump grip you like on here, making this nice and easy to replace, um, which is a major improvement from their previous one because this was a, uh, you know, if I had broken the Picatinny mounted version when I first got the original one, I would have just slapped my own thing on it and done a review. Um, on this one, it was not an issue at all. Blaster is pretty standard, prime fire, prime fire. I did experience some misfires there. We're gonna hope that starts. Performance wise, this blaster comes with two springs and multiple spacers to get you a range of performance out of the box. Each of the spacers has a specific rating and is either, either intended for the seven kilogram or the 12 kilogram. The seven kilogram by itself is supposedly 120 FPS. The spring spacer with the seven kilogram is 150 FPS, while the 12 kilogram with the with no spring spacer, or rather with a spacer that's intended for the 12 kilogram is 200 FPS. Now, in our actual testing, Perry ran all of these, these three combinations through a 20 shot average, throwing out only exceptionally bad shots that look like misreads. And uh, using our Pro Chrono, same setup we use for everything with a dedicated lighting setup, 20 shot average. Uh, we've got the numbers here on the screen. So you'll see they are quite a bit lower than the, the numbers that are on the caps. So we're suspecting that they intended that to be sort of a hard cap, like your blaster doesn't go above this. The Talon Magwell is great. However, the breech inside is very interesting. The breech seems to actually look like it was printed. I'm assuming it's an SLS print, but I could be mistaken. It's got a very nice texture to it, and it looks like, it looks like SLS, um, meaning it might be nylon. Now, in one of Orange Modworks videos, uh, sort of an apology video and talking about the update as for why this took five months to get replacements, they mentioned some upgrades they made. And one of those upgrades was a skinny style breech, meaning you could insert a magazine while you have it primed. Now, a magazine like our Tachi here, this is our sample, so it's got the name on it, the low power spring, but uh, this goes in there just fine, goes all the way up and, and feels great. However, both Perry and I here testing with the talons, the feed lips are much wider, much tighter than that skinny pusher. So it's, that's a lot more stress than I would wanna put on my mags personally. So I can't say I'm sold on that feature. It's just got more resistance going over that pusher than I would personally wanna see. And I don't think I would wanna do that to my talon mags over and over, especially with that textured, uh, print, which does again feel like SLS. I think you'd probably wear down the mags. I guess maybe I, over time they would just wear themselves in. Be curious to hear your thoughts on that, but it's definitely not a skinny pusher or skinny breech like the ones we sell for the Nexus and the ones that are available on other blasters. It requires a fair amount of force to plug in there. And just to be certain, we did test um, quite a few different ones. It certainly works, but it's, it's definitely tight. 
One more note on the gravity drop is with the skinny breech, you of course can't gravity drop. Um, if you're primed back, you, you, you can. So you can just see that the breech is still holding it even if it's supposed to be a narrower breech. Um, and then the uh, Tachi mag won't drop, air drop, unless you give it, no, you'll have, to, you'll have to pull it ultimately. I do think the Tachis look kind of, look pretty nice in here and I think would work pretty well. In the back side, we've got a removable spacer and access to our spring. It's kind of an interesting little mechanism inside. You pull off this many, many threads here to swap your springs. And there's a custom tool that we can use that looks to be SLS printed as well um, to actually remove the spring. So it's kind of a two-step process. It's not just pull this out and swap your spring. You actually have to use this tool to get in there and, uh, and remove the bits. Um, kind of an interesting, interesting design. I like the fact that it comes with three spring options out of the box, so there's no need to find an upgrade or swap swap anything. Where you can get everything from 120 to 175 FPS average, which I think that'll cover you for most games. I guess that 175, I'd kind of like to see that be actually 200 because there are a lot of games that are 200, and then. There's no reason there shouldn't be a, th a 250 FPS because a lot of competitive games are 250, so that's another option I would like to see. So maybe they'll have a, a new spring option in the future. One very interesting thing that they are offering is an official warranty on the blaster. They're claiming a, a two-year limited warranty on parts and replacements and two years of free maintenance, uh, limited to once a year, available to US, Singapore, and Taiwan, Taiwan customers. Um, that seems pretty insane because I assume you have to pay for round trip shipping if you're going to have to send this off for them to service it. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that is um, going to be a nightmare for them to actually do. That's not saying we don't take care of our customers, but two years on a product that's going to get run around and played with and abused and has had some issues out of the box is, is concerning. <laughs> <laughs> I would say at the very least. Um, I really do like this color scheme. They call this rocket white, but to me, this just screams ghost ops. Uh, you know, very, very similar to the Rival series. And I think I like that a lot. It's very, very cool. One other accessory that apparently exists is an option to swap this for a buffer tube. Uh, we are a little unclear whether that was supposed to be included or if that's something you purchase separately. And to me, it's kind of a problem because this is just not you cannot um, play with a blaster like this and, and fire like this because just without being able to shoulder this, I'm gonna hold this as steady as I can. I mean, you can just see how much my muzzle is moving. It's really not, uh, that was me double priming, just uh, not a blaster fault that time. Uh, but. It's definitely, I mean, it needs a stock. Uh, so I, I assume there's something either coming for that or an option. It looks like this just bolts on, so that would be pretty easy to change. One thing about the function of the blaster that Perry actually pointed out was that you really don't have a sense for when you fully prime the blaster. Um, you prime back and you can feel the back plate and you go forward, but this is kind of just loose up here and now I've just been double primed it again. <laughs> but up front, you really don't know if you've got, got it primed. So you get this sense of, I should just push the, the thing forward all the time. There's no, nothing stopping you from double priming it, of course, but especially on the front end, you sort of don't know whether you, whether you are totally engaged. So I think I would get in the habit of just holding this forward as I'm firing. I have seen other blasters that kind of behave like that, but it's something worth noting that just with the stickiness of the slide, um, which it is a fairly smooth prime. It's a nice short stroke and uh, it feels very snappy. I, I still am bugged by this, this notch here. I'm gonna have to file, I'm gonna sand these edges here. If these edges right here that are here were just all filleted or you had a little fill-in piece that could just slot in place there, be done. Uh, another thing we did notice is uh, these screws up front seem to like to loosen themselves. They basically were loose after firing one magazine. Uh, and uh, additionally, the front plate, which I don't think is structural, has two cracks in it already. So we've already got a 3D printed part broken on our replacement, but maybe we can take it from the original. Hey, it's not broken here. So I'm gonna swap those and we'll have a complete, uh, complete blaster. But uh, it does sound like they would obviously handle any replacements on parts like that. However, ours did arrive broken. 
The second version I was shipped does have much, much better print quality. I'm still seeing some layer lines that are a little heavier than a lot of the products we would ship here in house, but we really do have our printers dialed in and um, I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> um, but compared to the original, it is just, it is night and day, especially if you put a light source overhead and kind of look at the layer lines and uneven extrusion and there's gaps and things in the original. So they definitely did improve uh, the overall quality and feel of the blaster. At the end of the day, I'm not sure who this blaster is for. Uh, Talon claws are more customizable. Lynxes are more customizable and have a lot of options. They both fall into a similar price point, though this one is ready to fire out of the box. At $150 plus shipping, it puts it uh, within spitting distance of say the Worker Swift. And I think honestly the Worker Swift in many ways is a superior blaster. Uh, it also puts it kind of hand in hand, very, very close to a Talonclaw or a Lynx. And again, it's kind of the same, same issue. I think either of those blasters is probably a better performer. That said, it definitely has some style points. It is unique, but as mentioned in the beginning of the video, my whole experience has kind of been tainted with uh, the customer service I've received on this. I think I'm gonna give this three out of five stars. There are some issues here and there. It's not perfect, but it is a much better offering than what I first received. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Do we even think there's room for more 3D printed springers on the market? I mean, I ordered this when, when it came out, you know, uh, seven months ago, or when it came, went up for sale in March anyway. And I ordered it because I was like, who would dare try to make a 3D printed blaster when we have, you know, 10 options on, on the field for springers? And what do they bring to the game that's improved or, or you know, beats the, beats the performance of performance or ergonomics or what, what, is it, what room is there to actually build on and improve what people have out currently? And uh, I guess this is it. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Until next time, I'm Out of Darts.